What's up everyone? This is Don from the sci-fi hub.com. I'm going to tell you about building things in 3089. Now, first thing is make sure you've beaten the first boss. You have to do that to get access to this area. Soon after you do that, come down here, buy parts. The parts are cheap. It's 129 credits per container. Each container has 50 parts. So it's really inexpensive at this stage of the game. And of course, you're going to want to get a tool. The first tool I came across was about 3,500 credits, which also is really not a lot. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is a storage container. The storage container is pretty cheap. It's only 25 parts. And of course, you'll find yourself in a situation early on where you have a lot of items that you really wish you could keep. Something you might be able to combine later to make a better weapon and you just don't have the space for it. Make sure you get a storage container early on. Now we're going to build a vehicle. The vehicle you build is very dependent on your tool. Notice this first vehicle is very basic. That's because I have a basic tool. That, that didn't sound right. That's not exactly what I meant, but moving on, one thing that's different about this vehicle versus the kind that you just find floating around in the world is that once you jump out of this vehicle, it's gone. You can't get back into it later. It's destroyed. Uh, robots are not that much better than us. They are wasteful, wasteful creatures and clearly have some lessons to learn. Here are these boxes you see around all these, these enemies that are outside. That is the result of using the radar, but I'll explain that a bit later. First, we're going to take a look at the turret. A turret is very handy. It says it's temporary, but when I placed it, it stayed out there for quite a while. And when you have a lot of enemies around and no other friendlies, build a turret. They'll do your dirty work for you, distract the enemy a lot, and it's, it's great. It's worth the extra bulk of carrying around a tool, I think, just for that reason. While my new friend and I attempt to take out these enemies, I'm going to distract you from my terrible aim by explaining the booster item. The booster item is a placeable item and it has a large area of coverage. It will increase your skill, in this case it increased my skill by 8.3 across the board, across all skills. But like many items in this game, it is affected by the level of your tool. The higher the level of your tool, the greater the benefit. These are my skills without the booster item active. I'll cut ahead here, heading back toward the base, and you'll see all my skills are up by 8.3 from this booster item. That's pretty significant. It's a pretty powerful item, has a huge coverage area, as I've said, and only costs 60 building points. Now I'm going to talk about the radar. The radar has a huge coverage area as well, just like the booster. 60 building points, just like the booster. And it not only shows you the triangles of where all the enemies are, it also shows you the rectangles around the enemies when you're not in the map mode, as you saw earlier. Now we're going to take a look at the teleporter. This is another placeable item that costs 60 building points and the great thing about this is no matter where you're at on the map you can go to the teleporter option in the menu as shown here and it will take you back to that teleporter. It does cost you a fair amount of credits but it can be really worth it if you're out in the middle of nowhere and want to get back quickly and if you have the credits to spare. The great thing is, once you're back there, you do whatever you need to do, sell stuff, whatever, you can teleport right back instantly to where you were before you went back to your teleporter. This is another really useful item. And now on to the most interesting and potentially most expensive method of building in this game, the freeform building. There's really a lot you can do with this, especially if you want to get artistic and practice your architectural skills. I'm sure people are going to come up with a lot of really interesting structures. But me, I'm a little more practical than that. I'm building a bridge. This is an area where I have to cross pretty regularly, and a bridge is a lot nicer than either sinking to the bottom of this lake or hovering over it with a hoverboard every time. I'm going to make things easier on myself for the future. And as you can see, it's pretty expensive. It's currently at 125 points to build this bridge, and this is just the bare minimum that I'm making here. You have to make sure everyone is out of your way. As it says there, dynamic object is too close. That was a bot. It will not move them out of the way. You have to do that yourself or wait for them to move. But, you know, that was a bridge. It does the trick. It's a little lopsided. Don't judge me. But I'm going to go a little farther than that. I'm going to build a little enclosure on one end of the bridge. Uh, something just to give me a little added bit of safety and stealth when there's nothing else around. 
I'm going to tell you about the arrows that are appearing on the structures as you build. Now, it's probably pretty obvious how it works, and the game does a pretty good job of explaining it, but I'm going to tell you a little about it anyway. After you place your two anchor points, you'll get the little universal symbol for rotation. If you hold down the right mouse button and push forward or back on your mouse, then the structure will rotate up or down or side to side or however it is you have the anchor points placed. Same thing for the arrow pointing out or up where you adjust the length or the thickness respectively and you cycle between these modes by left clicking. As you're building you don't want to get too far away from the structure or it will disappear. Also if you switch to another weapon or item then the structure that you're working on will disappear. And now, instead of having hot death rain down upon me, I'm in here drinking cocoa with my BFFs. A little bit of planning goes a long way. But what if you place a structure that you no longer have a use for? That's what the reclaim mode is for. You can get back half of your points. Better than nothing. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out the sci-fi hub.com. See you again soon. Bye.